Okay, so without the aid of a calculator, can you do this problem? Well, let me go ahead and describe the problem to you. You can see it right here, but it's parentheses 1 minus 2 and parentheses to the fifth power. What is this equal to? Well, hopefully you know how to do this uh, problem. It's not that difficult, but if you don't do this in the precise, correct order, you will get this wrong. So if you know how to do this, go ahead and put your answer into the comment section. I'll show you the correct answer here in just one second. And then I'm going to walk through this uh, solution step by step. Now, uh, before we get started, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John. I am a middle and high school math teacher. I've been teaching math for decades. And uh, it really is my true passion to try to make learning math as easy as possible. So if you're having a tough time in mathematics, check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. And if this video helps you out, don't forget to like and subscribe as that definitely helps me out. Okay, so uh, again, you know, not too difficult of a problem, but we don't want to use our calculators, all right? You just want to use that calculator in between your ears, that uh, thing called a brain. That's much, much better than AI. Matter of fact, that's not even artificial intelligence. That's the real stuff. Remember, your brain, your intelligence trumps AI. I know everyone's talking about AI and stuff like that. And AI is awesome, but your brain is even awesomer. And that's not even a word. And that word's probably pretty awesome just in and of itself. You see, you know, when you use your brain, you can come up with all kinds of creative stuff. But uh, anyways, let's go ahead and get into the solution here. We have 1 minus 2 to the fifth power. What's this equal to? Let's go ahead and take a look at the answer right now. The answer is negative 1. Okay, so hopefully a lot of you out there are like, this was an easy problem, Mr. YouTube Math Man. I thought you were going to challenge me. But uh, if you got this right, let's celebrate by giving you a nice little happy face and A plus a 100% and multiple stars. So you can tell your friends and family that indeed you are a junior expert in mathematics while on your way to being an Albert Einstein level mathematician. Fantastic. Good for you. Now, if you didn't get this right, don't get discouraged. You probably made a simple little error that we can correct right now. Okay, so let's go ahead and get into the solution. So the first thing we need to consider here is this thing, PEMDAS, right? Now, what is that, uh, uh, you know, this phrase? Some of you probably have heard this before. There's a kind of interesting little mnemonic, okay? Well, I don't know if it's interesting. It's probably more like, uh, you know, kind of fun to say. And the saying is this, and it's a mnemonic is just a, a simple memory aid. It's please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. Now, what does this uh, phrase even mean? Like, why are we even talking about it? Well, in mathematics, when we do things with numbers, what do we do with numbers? We add them, subtract, multiply, divide, we take powers uh, and such. So when you have all these different things, we need to be able to do problems in the precise order, okay? And that order is something called the order of operations. And we can rem uh, remember it by this phrase right here. Please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. Now, I'm not sure what Aunt Sally did, but we thank her anyways. Okay, so let's go ahead and just quickly review this. Uh, so P stands for, and by the way, this checklist goes from left to right. So P stands for parentheses. So if we see anything with parentheses, we're going to go there first. Obviously, we have parentheses. Uh, the second thing is E. That stands for power. So we're going to be looking for things like 2 to the third power. Uh, the next thing, and this is a highly confused thing when it comes to the order of operations, is we're not going to do the M. Now that stands for multiplication. D stands for division. A is addition. S is subtraction. So many, many students, okay, or people that do math, uh, or like, oh, I must do multiplication, then I got to do division, then I'll do addition, and then I'll do subtraction. No matter what, that's not the way that, uh, this works. You look at these as two groups, okay? You do multiplication, division, whatever you see first from left to right. So if you see multiplication, then division, then uh, that's pretty cool. It's M and D. But if you see division, then multiplication, that's the order you're going to do it in, okay? So this is a highly confused part of PEMDAS. So if you remember this one thing even from this video, you will have improved your odds of getting these problems right. Okay. You know, over the years, over the decades, this is such a common error. Okay. So it's not always multiplication and division. It's whatever you see from left to right. And the same holds true for addition and subtraction. So those are groups. It's whatever you see first from left to right. 
Okay, so uh, now that we understand the order of operations, we can look at this problem and kind of ask ourselves, all right, what do we need to do first? So we just go right to the P and we'll say, do we have parentheses? Well, of course we do. Uh, so we have to go inside those parentheses and work on that first. So we have one minus two. That's what we're gonna have to figure out. So one minus two, what is that equal to? Okay, well, if you didn't come up with the negative one, if you wrote one, okay, if your answer was a positive one, it's possible this is where you made your mistake. Okay, so one minus two is the same thing as one plus a negative two. And this is this negative is greater than this positive, so the answer is going to be negative. Okay, I like to kind of teach adding positive and negative numbers um, using the concept of money because everyone likes money. So one plus negative two, negative negative numbers are like you owe people money, okay, or you have debt. So if you owe your best friend uh, two dollars, that's negative two dollars, but you only have one dollar in your pocket, you give them that dollar, right? But you still owe them. One dollar. So negative numbers are like you owe. That's a, you know you have debt, all right? But either you know whether you use this model about money or uh, another uh, model, okay? Or just remember the rule. You need to know how to add and subtract positive numbers. Now, uh, if you have not yet uh, learned this, now you know a little bit about adding and uh, positive and negative numbers. But one minus two is negative one. Okay, so we're following PEMDAS here. We did what's inside parentheses. So now we need to figure out what negative one to the fifth power is equal to. Okay, so we're gonna take a look at that next. But before we do, I'm gonna ask you to consider subscribing. Uh, I've been on YouTube for a long time. I pour my heart out because I just love to teach math. I'd be on YouTube no matter what. Um, but I'm teaching basically from basic math all the way up to advanced math uh, like calculus. So. If you're learning or if you're interested in mathematics in this range, I have like 2,000 plus videos on my YouTube channel and I'm posting all the time. But it really helps me tremendously uh, when uh, people hit that subscribe button, hit that notification button. So if you wouldn't mind, uh, you know, that would be awesome. Anyways, back to the prompt. So again, we figured out that uh, this um, problem, let's go back to the original problem here, one minus two to the fifth, we're talking about PEMDAS, order of operations. We went inside parentheses, one minus two, we now know is negative one. So we have to figure out what negative one to the fifth power means. Well, negative one to the fifth power, okay, means we're gonna take negative one and multiply it by itself five times. So here we got negative one, there's one, two, three, four, five. We have five negative one, so we're gonna mul uh, be multiplying negative one by itself five times. So now, this is the next step in the prompt, we're gonna figure this out. So what's an easy way to figure this out? Well, here is the easiest uh, way. So of course, you're gonna need to know the rules for multiplying positive and negative numbers. So the rule, when you multiply positive and negative numbers, is if the signs are the same, in other words, a negative times a negative, the answer is positive, okay? If you have a positive times a positive, the answer is positive. So if the the numbers you're multiplying together have the same sign, negative and negative, then the answer is positive, 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 the answer is positive. By the way, this is the same rule for division. So when we look at our uh, negative one being multiplied by itself five times, we could just look at this as, uh, break this up in groups of two, right? So negative one times negative one, I'm just look, thinking about the sign here, right? So negative times a negative, that's a positive. Now negative times a negative, that's a positive. And then this is just a negative number by itself. So a positive times a positive will be a positive. And then I have this negative. So a positive times a negative is what? Now, when the signs are different, like a positive times negative or a negative times a positive, the answer is negative. So, of course, we're multiplying one by itself. But we the big thing here is what is the sign? So this is going to be a negative one. Okay, so hopefully this problem was pretty easy. And hopefully you got this right. That's awesome if you did. If you didn't, please don't get discouraged. There is no such thing as failing in mathematics. Now, some of you might be saying, what are you talking about, Mr. YouTube Math Man? I failed my math class back, you know, listen, I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about, uh, you know, if you quit and if you just like, okay, I give up, well, then that's kind of like failing. But if you get bad grades, you know, let's say you got Fs and Ds, guess what? I've gotten those type of grades before, you know, in math as well, all right? All this means, this just reflects your current 
level of understanding. It doesn't mean this is what you could learn. This has no reflection on your potential. So if you get a bad grade or if you don't understand anything, that just that's your current status. But you can always change that by um, doing what? Well, first, getting clear and understandable instruction. And that's what my channel is about. That's what I try to do is teach math in a clear and understandable way. And, uh, you know, uh, I think I could do a pretty good job at that because I've been studying math for decades and teaching math for decades. So you just get better at anything. You know, if you play a video game for decades, you're going to be great at it, right? You know, if you're, you know, do, you know, a gardening for 40 years, you're probably pretty good at gardening. I've been teaching math for a long time. So, you know, I got, uh, you know, little uh, techniques and strategies to communicate things to students because I already know in advance where students are going to have a tough time. So if you like my uh, content, please consider subscribing and liking. And, um, you know, with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.